In this module, we are going to take a look at the MTCs that control the trunk. Rather than look at each muscle individually, we are going to take a vectorized approach. With this approach, we examine the MTC's force vector in relation to the axis of rotation to determine the torque produced by the MTCs about that axis. A couple of words of caution before we begin. First, for this module, we will not be examining the MTCs that control the head, the neck, or the ribs. Second, it's important to understand that this model represents a simplified version of MTC function and joint control. We are going under the assumption that each joint would be moving in isolation. Multi-joint movement is a lot more complex than this. But hey, we've got to start somewhere. Third, we will not necessarily examine every MTC that creates torque about a joint. We will only be examining the major ones in this module. With these cautions in mind, let's begin and let's begin in the thoracolumbar region. In the sagittal plane, there is a medial lateral axis that goes through the superior portion of the inferior vertebral body. Any MTCs that have a force vector that is posterior to this axis will create a torque that will extend the thoracolumbar spine. While any MTCs that have a force vector that is anterior to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will flex the thoracolumbar spine. MTCs that will create a torque that will extend the thoracolumbar spine include the spinalis, the longissimus, and the iliocostalis, the three of which collectively are known as the erector spinae, along with the multifidus and the quadratus lumborum. MTCs that will create a torque that will flex the thoracolumbar spine include the rectus abdominis, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the psoas major. In the frontal plane, there's an anterior-posterior axis that goes through the inferior vertebral body. Any MTCs that have a force vector that is lateral to this axis of rotation will create a torque that will laterally flex the spine on that side. Remember, MTCs can only pull, they cannot push. So that means that you cannot have muscles on the right side which will laterally flex the spine on the left side. MTCs that will create a torque that will laterally flex the spine include the external oblique, the internal oblique, the quadratus lumborum, the iliocostalis, and the longissimus. Before we talk about movements in the transverse plane, it's important that we understand a couple ideas about force vectors in the transverse plane. Notice here that we are going to have an axis of rotation that goes through the center of this particular body. Now, if I was going to rotate this body to the left, I can have an anterior force vector that's on the right side of the body. I can have an anterior force vector that's on the left side of the body. I can have a posterior force vector that's on the left side of the body. Or I can have a posterior force vector on the right side of the body that will all rotate this body to the left. Those force vectors that are on the same side are going to be known as ipsilateral rotators. So any force vector on the left side that rotates the body to the left is an ipsilateral rotator. While any force vector on the right side that would rotate to the left are called contralateral rotators. So now let's examine the thoracolumbar spine in the transverse plane, which will occur about an axis that again goes through the vertebral bodies. Now, anteriorly I can have a muscle on the right side or a muscle on the left side that would both rotate the thoracolumbar spine to the left. This would include the ipsilateral internal oblique and the contralateral external oblique. Now let's look at the posterior aspect. I can have an MTC on the left side and I can have an MTC on the right side that would both produce a torque that would cause rotation to the left. This would include the ipsilateral iliocostalis and the contralateral multifidus. Now let's take a look at the craniocervical region. For the craniocervical region, it's important to understand the nomenclature of some muscles. Remember, the axis of rotation is still going to go through the anterior portion of the inferior vertebral body. Cervical muscles are going to have both their superior and inferior attachments on the cervical spine. 
capital muscles are going to have their superior attachment on the skull. Any muscle that is posterior to the axis of rotation will create a torque that will extend the craniocervical region. And any MTC that has a force vector that's anterior to that axis of rotation will create a torque that will flex the craniocervical region. This is no different than what we see in the thoracolumbar region. Now, I'm not going to have you know the individual MTCs that will create a torque to either extend or flex the craniocervical region, but I do want you to know that those MTCs that will create a torque that will extend the craniocervical region have longer moment arms, tend to have a greater cross-sectional area, and there tend to be more of them. Taken together, this means we can create a larger extensor torque about the craniocervical region than we can flexor torque. So that is what I would like you to know for this module about the MTCs that control the trunk. More information about this can be found in Chapter 15 of Biomechanics, a Case-Based Approach.